Um, it's recording. <laughs> great. We'll use all this. Yeah. We'll use all this in the, in the, in the actual video. Oh, this. Um, okay. Should I just go into it? So there's one thing I want to make very clear first and foremost, and this might surprise you a little bit if you've been following me or the Anima series or my Facebook page for a little while, but I am not actually passionate about writing books as much as I am passionate about spreading ideas. The reason that I write books is to spread those ideas or to spread the word that I believe that God has placed in my heart or to accomplish the mission that I believe he has placed on my life. And the reason I use books to do that is because I look at my skill set and my skill set supports writing books. I find that I have gifts with writing, with using words, and so books are the perfect platform, they're the perfect vehicle by which to get my idea across. So if you're thinking about writing a book, I would say take a step back first and foremost, because that's probably why you're asking this question is because you're thinking about writing a book. Take a step back and ask yourself, is this the best way to get my ideas across? That's the first thing. And I forget what the second thing was. What else did I say? But now to actually answer the question, there's many, many different ways to go about writing a book. I've written a few and I've done each of them in a different way. There's some that I've written a little bit at a time over the course of a year, and there's others that I sat and wrote in a matter of three weeks or two weeks. Um, there's some times where I'll write them in order and other times I'll write them out of order. There's a million different ways to do it. But I would say that the important thing is before you even set out to write a book is first, the best thing that you can do is to first develop the practice of writing every single day. Because without that practice, without that discipline in place, when it gets to the time, you know, halfway through the book, three quarters of the way through the book, you know, 80% of the way through the book, when it gets tough, when you're in the dip, when you're in the trenches, if you don't have that discipline of writing every day, you're going to quit and you're going to stop writing. So I would say before you even think about writing a book, first develop that discipline of writing each and every day. And once you have that discipline in place, the book will write itself. Wisdom. That was me dropping wisdom. So this is a question I get a lot. And I mean a lot, 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 a lot. And I know I've answered it many, many times. You're laughing at me. My wife is laughing at me. A lot, 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 a lot. You think that I'm not gonna put this in the video, but You're not putting this in the video. I am. So I've said this a lot, and if you've heard the answer before, I apologize, but I'm gonna answer it here, now, on Ask Anima, once and for all. Yes, we have all struggled with feeling the presence of God, with feeling the love of God. But when you look at the Bible, it talks very little about feeling God, but it talks a whole lot about trusting God. And tr trusting God, that's a choice. I can't choose when I feel him or not, because feeling, that's an emotion. That's, that's something that is outside of our control. But I can choose to trust God. And it's not as much about feeling God as it is about choosing to trust him even when we can't feel him. To me, that is one of the many definitions of faith. It's choosing to trust in God and trust in his promises and trust in who he says he is, regardless of how I'm feeling. So, I have had many times where I've struggled with feeling the presence of God, but it's in those moments that I need to make the choice even more intensely to trust him. What's the next one? So I've answered a similar question to this um, in previous videos talking about prayer. 
uh, I make a terrible, terrible joke when I say there's, you know, the old Reese's slogan of like, there's no wrong way to eat a Reese's, there's no wrong way to pray to Jeezy's. <laughs> My wife's laughing at me again. And I think that also applies to worship. I don't think there's any wrong way to worship. Other than the obvious exceptions like murder or worse things than that, uh, I think that really any action that we take could be used as a form of worship. It all has to do with the heart behind the action. Worship itself is not the action, but it is the reason or it is the heart behind the action that we take. For example, let's say you are an accountant. I believe that you can use your work as an accountant as a way to worship God. If your heart behind doing whatever accountants do, crunching numbers or whatever it is, is to bring glory to God through it, to, to help families with their finances, to help them feel financially secure, to help them steward their money for the glory of God, I believe that you crunching those numbers and working that calculator every day, that is worship. And that applies to anyone, that applies to a chef, that applies to a kindergarten teacher, that applies to a construction worker, whatever it might be. So to me, worship is not necessarily the action, it is not the action of singing, because anyone can sing, but it is the heart behind the action. And the heart of, I want to glorify God through this action, that is worship. And that can be done with almost anything. Let's, yeah, let's give it a stop. That's all we have for you today. Uh, thanks so much for watching. I do want to make one quick announcement and one quick make one quick ask of you all or give you one quick fun opportunity. As many of you know, as many of you dedicated Fanimas know, we are going on tour in October. <laughs> Don't do that ever again. <laughs> We're going to be driving many, many miles across the country, somewhere like seven to 10,000 miles over the course of 30 days. It is going to be fun, but it is going to be a lot of long car rides. So we are making an ask of you. If you have music that you love, that you want to share with us, or if you make original music, like if you have original songs, or if you're a DJ, or you mix stuff, or you create stuff in GarageBand, any of those two, we want you to send us CDs to listen to on the road. We're going to be doing a lot of like Snapchat stories and, and vlogging while we're on the road, and we'll make sure to shout you out whenever we're listening to your CD. So create us a little mixtape of music that you either love and wanna share with us or music that you've made originally and send it to us. I will include the address to send it to in the description below. So check out for that. Yeah, CDs, cause we're old school. Yeah, CDs, cause we're old school, which you probably heard that, I don't know why I repeated it. But that's it. Also, speaking of Snapchat, follow me on Snapchat. My stories are really turning up. I'm, I'm an old man. It took me a while to get on the platform, but I'm there now. And I'm thinking I might be here to stay. So follow me right here on Snapchat. Thank you so much for watching. Also, uh, check out some of our other videos. They'll be linked right now. No, don't dance. Aaron doesn't want me to dance, but I know you do. I'm not married to you.